Hi folks, Sherry Schreiber of gettingbetter.com. And uh, I haven't posted a video in a while because I guess I just haven't had the motivation or impetus. You know, it's one of those strike while the iron's hot kinds of situations. But today I got a sudden burst of enthusiasm and I couldn't wait to start talking to you about chemistry. Chemistry! My generation used to mention it a lot. I don't know if that's still going on. I'm presuming it does. Romantic chemistry. But I got so enthusiastic, I almost didn't want to stop and draw my eyebrows on today. <laughs> but what's facial expression with no eyebrows? <laughs> Whoopi Goldberg, I guess. Um, but chemistry, we think of romantic chemistry as this, this element, this elusive, abstract element that draws us to each other. It just compels us toward each other towards somebody that we're attracted to and uh, all kinds of energy starts flowing through our body and uh, we feel groin sensations we're all excited uh, we want to uh, uh, get close to them smell them taste them feel them enter them chemistry but what makes that up what's that really about this chemistry, this thing called chemistry. Well, I think it's about the fact that we each have our own unique vibrational frequencies or frequency. <laughs> and when we meet somebody who shares that same vibrational frequency, we feel an incredible draw toward this person. We feel a sense of sameness and a likeness. Uh, we feel like I, we've met our soulmate <laughs> because, uh, gosh, everything we like, they like, and um, and um, and and what's important to us in terms of priorities uh, in life is important to them too, and we're of like mind and. We feel this sexual attraction with the other, and um, and that's what falls under the banner of chemistry. But I think it goes a little deeper. If you've checked in with my Twitter feed, Psych Savant at Twitter, um, you've probably seen that I, I speak a lot to... Um, the fact that we are drawn to people who exactly match our own level of emotional development. Well, this isn't good news if you're a fixer, rescuer, caregiver type person and you've worked very hard on yourself and become very independent and strong and, uh, well, um, let's say charitable in your world. And, uh, and you have a tendency to rescue stray humans. <laughs> because you feel sorry for them and you think that you're in a more empowered place than they. But the truth of the matter is, you vibrate at their frequency. That's what brings you together with those people. The vulnerabilities you do not recognize or own or accept in yourself are what you see in that other person. So it's like, it's like a jigsaw puzzle we humans, looking for our own missing pieces in somebody else. So if you've grown up feeling like you had to be very strong and uh, very in charge and very in control and, and, and you've turned into a fixer, caregiver, rescuer, uh, 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 savior, uh, uh, teacher, guide, uh, uh, you still have vulnerabilities. And the other person, maybe they're a borderline wave or something like that. Very pitiful character. Always needs rescuing. Uh, um, they own the features that you have discarded and rejected 
within yourself. So you naturally have this gravitational pull toward them to connect. Because you're really walking around sort of like half a personality structure. You're missing some vital pieces to your humanness. And part of being human is being vulnerable at times. We're all vulnerable. When was the last time you really hurt yourself, injured yourself badly? You may have despised yourself for doing that. You may have shamed yourself for getting hurt. But the fact of the matter is, you are confronted with your vulnerability. And there's just no friggin' way around that. So chemistry. I used to go with a guy in my mid to late 40s. And he um, had just come back from a rebirthing experience, some sort of seminar thing. And he talked to me over dinner. This was our first date. He talked to me over dinner about this this thing called this attraction strategy. Um, attraction strategy is trying to find someone who's our soulmate, who vibrates at the same frequency we do. And this is compelling for us. This is natural for us. Don't you want to hang out with friends who have a lot in common with you? <laughs> well, it goes the same for lovers. And, um, and so this attraction strategy, which I borrowed from him, you'll see me talk about it in my new book, um, Do You Love to Be Needed or Need to Be Loved? It's just very recently been published, I'm very proud of that effort, uh, which uh, really goes into great depths in terms of explaining and describing um, codependency, how it's rooted in the body from infancy onward, and, um, and we're not born caregivers. <laughs> we're born to be taken care of, um, but unfortunately that doesn't happen for a lot of us. So do you love to be needed or need to be loved? It covers a lot of bases <laughs> in the realm of caregivers and especially exposes um, people in the psychotherapeutic community who um, aren't terribly balanced in this regard. Attraction strategy. We're trying to get it right with each new partner. We're trying to get it right. We couldn't get it right in childhood. We had impaired parents, most of us. <laughs> and, and, and we meet someone who not only similarly vibrates with us at our frequency, but they vibrate with our parents at theirs. <laughs> so naturally, who we grew up loving in parentheses, whether or not they returned our love and adoration, is who we bond with and marry in adulthood. It's inevitable. It just always happens. So, so that's the attraction strategy. That's a big piece of it. We're looking for what we didn't receive, inadequate supply at least, as infants and throughout our childhood. So unless you do core rebuilding work, like I used to do with my clients, <laughs> you will forever be seeking love in all the wrong places. Remember that song? Looking for love in all the wrong places? Because your attraction strategy draws you to people who are wired exactly like you are, who are just as damaged and broken and incomplete as you are. And until you repair that self inside of you, that child self, who was very at a, at a very tender age when these injuries started occurring in your life, <laughs> these self-worth wounds, these I'm not lovable wounds uh, through faulty parenting, um, you'll keep being attracted to the same kinds of people over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. And one day, maybe in your 50s, you wake up, you come out of the ether finally, and you say, wait a minute, maybe it's not them. 
I'm the common denominator here. In all these relationship experiences I've had, <laughs> maybe I need to take a closer look at me and what needs repairing inside of me. Maybe it's time to work on my own inner carnage that's left over from my infancy experiences when I couldn't get enough nurturant maternal supplies from my mommy to help me grow up feeling beyond a shadow of a doubt that I was lovable and good enough and adorable. And that, my dears, is the crux of all of our societal ills. It starts when we're babies. So I'm hoping this video uh, 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 runs smoothly enough for you today. This is my old webcam through Dell. <laughs> but um, I'm hoping that this is cogent, that this is understandable. It is so essential to repair your core wounds, the parts in you that make you believe that you're supposed to come to everyone else's rescue and fix and train and teach and guide everyone else. But, you know, my dears, nobody can give someone a glass of water from an empty well. And you engage in these behaviors to satisfy something in you, to fill up that emptiness in you. So uh, maybe you'll take a look at my book, buy, buy it as an e-book version or something like that, and explore uh, this habitual pattern in your life um, until you repair you. Your attraction strategy cannot change. You will not choose healthy, happy partners who will actually enhance your world. They will be like an albatross around your neck. I hope this has been educational today. And bye for now.